Look at the outside of this man. Look at his physical appearance. Look into this man's heart. Look into his soul. Now look more deeply. I feel this emptiness inside me every time I look into the mirror. The impulse I want to do is just punch that mirror because I can see my fucking parents in the background just staring at me and doing nothing as I've gone through this my entire fucking life. And I want to scream, what the fuck is your problem? Where were you? Why did you leave me here? Conversion therapy is a set of dangerous and totally discredited practices that attempt to change the sexual orientation or gender identity of a person. They are often practiced by licensed mental health professionals, also sometimes unlicensed counselors, religious leaders, sometimes just in church basements. Um, and they most often target kids under 18. And these people give them what they claim is a solution. What it actually does is it supports an industry that is profiting off of the harm and sometimes death of, of kids. And to one degree or another, conversion therapy is happening in every state in the country. What is your greatest fear this weekend? Of letting people down and myself. What is your greatest fear this weekend? My greatest fear, just not being present and not being here, doing what God wants me to do. What is your greatest fear this weekend? My greatest fear is that I will leave without having touched someone else's life. What is your greatest fear this weekend? My greatest fear this weekend is letting you down. See the next man. Everyone is heterosexual. The idea that some people are naturally homosexual or naturally gay is just a, a social construct. So when you have an individual who has same-sex attraction, we see it as something went wrong developmentally. And we try to resolve the issue and put them back on the path toward their natural heterosexuality. That's the philosophy of it. Uh, my name is jo Joseph Nicolosi. I'm a clinical psychologist, um, a licensed clinical psychologist, and I'm the founder of reparative therapy. The concepts and principles of reparative therapy is something I have developed over 30 years and four books and many, many articles. Journey into Manhood came into existence based upon the reparative therapy model. So the basic uh, principles of reparative therapy were taken and turned into a weekend experience. We're doing a 32 man, 32 man circle so that we have the appropriate size space to work with for our rehearsals. So we need more here. We got six, we need eight. Our organization, People Can Change, is there for the man who voluntarily wants to experience some diminishment in his unwanted same-sex attraction. And Journey Into Manhood is a weekend program that we offer to help build that understanding and that opportunity for, for men who want to choose that path. We have no interest in telling people who are happy being gay that they should change or that there's anything wrong with them or whatever. That's not our mission. That's not what we believe. But we do believe that men who are uncomfortable with their homosexuality should have opportunities to understand it and try to diminish it to the extent that that's possible for them. Okay, 
Now this is a rehearsal. Now we're going to start off working through the kinks of the process itself. <clears throat> Thank you so much, men, for your willing to serve. I'd like all of you to put your hands in your lap. Put your feet flat on the floor. Feel the power of the earth coming up into your body. Close your eyes. Take a moment to breathe. Breathe in your nose and out your mouth. Yeah, the staff wear a pouch of magic seeds, so it represents Jack's, uh, the, the seeds that were planted in the, in the Jack story, um, Jack and the Beanstalk, and the potential for creativity and growth and uh, empowerment that the seeds represent. So once the journeyers go through the weekend, um, they receive this as a token of their experience. And interestingly, as an aside, in the Jack and the Giant Slayer movie, uh, I was pleased to see that Jack carries his magic seeds around his neck in a little pouch, which was 10 years or more after we started doing it. It's interesting. Music cue. Good. Stop. Go back to the beginning. Music cue. Perfect. OK, go. The story of Jack. And the amazing beanstalk. Yeah, we use a, a a fairy tale, a myth, the Jack and the Beanstalk story, as a kind of a metaphor for every boy's growth into manhood. Oh, and I'll give you these seeds. We borrowed some of the interpretation of it from Michael Gurian's book, The Wonder of Boys as he talks about and uses it as a, as a model of, of how this boy Jack is estranged from his mother a little bit as he, he goes off and experiences his masculinity. Look at it, a phallic symbol. So the beanstalk is a big penis? He is challenged and faces... Biggest, baddest, meanest. A giant, which represents his shadow, and that he finds gold, which represents the gold in him. <laughs> Golden eggs. <laughs> Mythicists call it a hero's journey. So every boy, boy's growth into manhood in some ways is a hero's journey as he battles his shadows and embraces his gold. Next is facing the shadow, B9, shadow guy. Some of the staff, we, we break them into specific roles to help to bring out different aspects of a man, roles that help men sort of look in the mirror at their own life and understand themselves in relationship to the world of masculinity. Okay, so see yourself as Jack. Go ahead and start to... See yourself as Jack, running from the giant. giant. Running from the, the shadow. shadow. Imagine it pushing through the walls, through your wall of fear and shame. So I did my first journey into manhood weekend back in 2007. It's probably the most impactful weekend I've ever went on in my entire life. I was never uh, what our society calls gay or homosexual or whatever we label we put on it. I am simply a man. If anything, I would always consider myself a heterosexual man who's just with a lot of um, uh, issues. Let's start with Jetty, since he knows this process. So you guys watch, watch Jetty as he, he models this. You want me to do it like I'm going to do it? Uh-huh. And I feel this emptiness inside me every time I look into the mirror. The impulse I want to do is just punch that mirror because I can see my fucking parents in the background just staring at me and doing nothing as I've gone through this my entire fucking life. And I want to scream, what the fuck is your problem? Where were you? Why did you leave me here? The goal of the weekend, journey into manhood, is is to find where on that journey a step was taken off so that you can find your way back on. 
to it. I felt so empty when I tried to live the lifestyle. It didn't feel right. I wanted to be a husband. I wanted to be a father. And I wanted to be true to that. And I wanted to be true to God. For me personally, what was missing was a father figure. Someone's going to be standing out there. Someone's going to be standing out there. And then as soon as we get big enough groups, the camp will take them up here. Really? And we'll... You've got this all set up? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Rich actually staffed my weekend. And that was my first time meeting him. And I look up to him very much because he started this organization that's helped over 2,000 men. And I hold him very highly in my mind. Um, I have a fear that I'm not going to become like him someday. And that's my goal. You know, it, it's, it's the same thing as when I see a father. You know, I want to be a father someday so badly. And I fear that that's not going to happen. Um, it, it's the same type of thing. Like as if your body was a sandbag and the stresses are like sand flowing out your fingers and your toes. Allow yourself to see this and to feel it. 31 years ago, I almost killed myself over my same-sex attractions. So everything that happened in my life prior to that, sexual abuse, physical abuse, being bullied to half to death, living in fear every day of my life, I realized what I was facing, I put a name to it, and I'm probably queer and homo. I said, oh, you're a, you, you really are a queer, you really are a homo. Mm. But I made the decision then that that wasn't where, how I wanted to live. I wanted a wife, I wanted kids, I wanted, the, I wanted a normal life, and I set out to go make it happen. One of the things we deal with a lot here is individual trauma that may have existed from bullying to more overt acts of sexual molestation or that kinds of thing. There's certainly a higher percentage of, of men dealing with unwanted same-sex attraction who've been sexually molested. That's, that seems clear. Today, I have a job I love. I have people I love that I work with. I have a church I love. I just love every minute of life and I feel free completely free to be the man that I want to be and the man that I believe God created me to be. There are many associated features of living a gay identity that is problematic. See the tender age at which homosexuals prefer their conquests. Lesbians, sadists, masochists, and other sex deviants. First of all, we go back to the fundamentals. We are physically, anatomically designed for the opposite sex. When you look at gay sex, very simply, the parts don't fit. Their relationships are more short term. There's more depression, there's more anxiety, there's more self-defeating, self-destructive behaviors, alcohol abuse. Gay men smoke cigarettes more than straight men, as a small example. There's a segment of gay, the gay world that is very much into one night stands and you know anonymous hookups and that kind of thing, and that's easy to, to find and easy to fall into group sex, anonymous sex. Pretty soon they've got, you know, a new partner, and then this partner, then that partner, then they've had 100, then they've had 200, and that's typical of the gay community. Many people who experiment in the gay world say, I don't want this. I want one wife, picket fence, 2.5 kids, period. And that's their right. Are you, so you're a yeah. married man? Yes. Do you have children? Yeah, I have one son. And um, is he... Heterosexual? <laughs> Can you imagine? No, of course he's heterosexual. He's married and he's a psychologist and he actually works at this clinic. What would you have said if he came to you and told you that? I, I would have said, I, what did I do wrong? <laughs>